Hello, what culture? It's me, Simon Miller, and that's right, it's part two of the Superstar Shake Up as we're about to go through SmackDown. And we're going to give the good bits and up, I'm going to give the bad bits down, and we're going to decide, has this WWE draft actually benefited Raw? Has it benefited SmackDown, or has it benefited the whole company? There's only one way to find out. Let's talk about Tuesday night wrestling programming. There's ups and downs. I don't think I've ever done this before. I mean, maybe I have. I don't keep like a tally of all my ups and downs and when I give them. But the start of SmackDown, getting it down. Makes me quite sad. Here's the thing, though. It started with AJ Styles coming out, and he got a great reaction from the crowd. And he wanted to talk about everything that's been going on with Shinsuke Nakamura the last few weeks. And I think that's fair enough. Because, you know, right now, Nakamura is a bit obsessed with AJ Styles' testicles. And if somebody was obsessed with my testicles, I want to have a chat with them as well. However, after calling out the former New Japan star, who came out instead? That's right, Rusev and Aiden English, and they were still healing it up. Why are they healing it up? Especially when the crowd cheered them as if they were baby faces. And yeah, that's what happened, because again, everybody loves Rusev, and everybody loves Rusev Day. And then this did lead to a match between AJ Styles and Rusev, and it was over in 30 seconds. Now, on the one hand, you're probably thinking, well, that can't be that bad, because this can't have been a proper encounter, and you'd be right. But it still did not paint Rusev in a good light. He got locked in the calf crusher within that 30 seconds, and Aiden English realising, oh, no, he may tap out. Well, he got in the ring, he beat up AJ Styles, and we got a disqualification. The two then continued to lay waste to AJ Styles until Daniel Bryan came out to make the save, and that was cool. You know, it's still fun and exciting to see Daniel Bryan in a wrestling role, but I can't get over this. I can't get over it. Rusev is now one of the most popular people on the WWE roster, and he's still being told to go out there and play the bad guy. Does that make sense to me? That makes sense. Cut to the backstage area after this for a segment between Paige and Shane McMahon. It was all right. They referenced Teddy Long a lot. They did the Teddy Long dance. Yes, I'll give it an up. We got told the main event would now be a tag team match between Rusev Day going against AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan and reminded us the Miz is now a SmackDown superstar. Cool. All right. Shelton Benjamin came out after this and I liked it. Up. He played heel here and said he didn't need Chad Gable and now was his time as a singles competitor and that he had specifically asked Paige for some competition this evening. So Randy Orton's music hit. I got quite excited about seeing Randy Orton versus Shelton Benjamin. You know, we may have seen like a cool arc out of nowhere. But then halfway through Orton's entrance, Jeff Hardy's music hit. So he's now on SmackDown 2 with the US Championship. And that was the match instead. Jeff Hardy versus Shelton Benjamin. Orton did seem confused about this, as did I. It was, it was very strange. However, Benjamin and Hardy had a good match. Hardy won after the Swanton Bomb. And I tell you, if we're now going to go into Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy for the US title, that's far better than Jinder and Orton, which we were getting. So, so far, SmackDown has made the WWE landscape a better place. I hope Benjamin doesn't get buried too. He's good and he's really good in singles matches. So finally, can we push him, please? A quick Miz promo followed where he let us know that he's not on SmackDown this evening, but he will be there next week to kick Daniel Bryan's ass up. Also had a funny little bit with Maurice where she told him not to swear in front of his newborn baby. I really like the Miz. We got a graphic next telling us that Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose are now on SmackDown. A graphic. That's all they got. A drawing. It's kind of good they're there, I guess, but down. I'm not entirely sure what happened next, but we did have Jey Uso going against Luke Harper. Let's get it down. Now, I like the idea. Harper basically destroyed Jey in about a minute to continue on this storyline about, hey, nobody can beat the Bludgeon Brothers. They're too dominant. That's what we should be doing. But here, after the winners, the champs continue to put the boots into Jey Uso. Naomi came out to be like, stop it, leave my husband alone. That doesn't really paint the Usos in a good light. I think we could have done more with this. It was a little bit, was a little bit weak. Mostly because the super heels then just walked off. That was it. They walked off. I don't think that's what super heels would do. I think super heels will continue to beat someone down regardless. But whatever. A huge up now though, because Samoa Joe is officially on SmackDown. Given how SmackDown works, this is really exciting because it means that one day Samoa Joe may actually become WWE Champion up. Destroyed Sin Cara and then proceeded to cut another amazing promo about everybody on the roster and insinuated that he still is taking on Roman Reigns at Backlash. And I tell you this, I got to see Samoa Joe twice this week, once on Raw, once on SmackDown. So it's Joe times two and Joe times two equals Happy Simon. That's a real equation. It got confirmed that Sanity is also being called up from NXT and headed to SmackDown. 
think that's a good idea, get it up. A lot of people seem mad that Nikki Cross isn't coming with them, but I actually think that benefits Nikki Cross. It's like Carmella when she got separated from Big Cass and Enzo. Let her shine as a single, she's got the talent, now's the time to fly. It got odd again next, but after confusing my old brain, it eventually got an up. It was a backstage promo with Daniel Bryan where he explained he wanted to help out AJ Styles because AJ Styles is one of the people who inspired him to make a comeback. And then we got another comeback because Big Cass turned up, he's now on SmackDown. He insulted Brian by saying he was short, and then gave him a little tap on the head and basically said, I don't think you're worth all this fuss that's been going on the last few weeks now. Out there in what culture audience land, you're probably thinking, Big Cass and Daniel Bryan, that sucks. But later on, I'm gonna tell you why it is indeed enough. <laughs> Not sure I enjoyed at all what followed, and I imagine I'll get some heat for that, but what are you gonna do is get her down. Basically what happened is this. Carmella came out to celebrate her Money in the Bank win and the fact she's now the WWE Champion, and the fact she did that by beating Charlotte, who she deems one of the greatest women wrestlers of all time. Charlotte arrived, said that Carmella was a chump and she wouldn't have done this if it wasn't for the Iconics. And the Iconics turned up and they said, shut up Charlotte, and they beat her up, and then Becky Lynch arrived and she helped out Charlotte. Then Billy Kay lost to Charlotte clean in her first television appearance on SmackDown. Great idea. It got alright at the end because then following another three-way beatdown onto Becky Lynch and Charlotte, Oscar came out to make the save, so she's now on SmackDown. And I like that pairing, all this three-way team, whatever you want to call it, but still, all of this felt flat, all this felt messy, I didn't enjoy it. Gallows and Anderson are now also on SmackDown, but they only got a graphic too. However, hopefully this does mean we'll actually start to do something with them as getting it up. And another up, because the bar have also been moved across to SmackDown. Probably the right move, get an up. And then it all went bonkers, but I laughed because I'm an idiot getting it up too. It started with the New Day basically being the New Day and also telling us that Sheamus sucks. And then they bumped into Ty Dillinger, who was talking to our truth he has also been drafted from Raw. They then did this ridiculous bit where R-Truth thought he'd actually been moved on to Monday night, and he also thought it was Monday night, and he did the whole my bad thing and said I'll see you tomorrow instead. It was really stupid, but I can't help it. I'm an idiot, I'm immature, I like this, and if anything, can we actually have more of our truth on television? I think he's pretty entertaining. Almas and Vega from NXT are also coming up to SmackDown. This was a little bit disappointing, because I would rather WWE had done something like we did with Drew McIntyre on Raw, but whatever. They're coming up, it's been made official, I think it's finally the right move, it's certainly time, we'll see what happens again enough. And it was made event time after this and this all ties into what I was talking about earlier so again it's getting an up said that a lot getting an up getting an up it was Brian and Styles versus Rusev Day and as always because everybody in the match is really talented we got a really good match and Daniel Bryan did all his moves and because that still feels all fresh and exciting everyone went crazy I went crazy everyone loved Daniel Bryan but it's the finish where we need to focus. Just as it seemed that Mr. Yes was gonna win Nakamura, he ran out through the crowd and you know what he did. He whacked AJ Styles and the balls once again. Then Daniel Bryan turned to see what was going on and bam, Big Cass booted him in the face. And so, you know, they lost because of DQ or they won because of DQ, it was a DQ. Now you may be worried, as I mentioned earlier, thinking I don't wanna see a Big Cass and Daniel Bryan food and you'd be right. I don't really want to see that either. However, I remember an interview from way back when where Brian said, you know what, I just want to work with the up and comer guys or the underutilized guys to try and give them some shine. At the moment, or back then, he was talking about the likes of Heath Slater. So if it makes Daniel Bryan happy to work with someone like Big Cass and make him better, I'm all right with this because I love Daniel Bryan. And that was SmackDown. Before we wrap things up, here's all the moves from Raw to SmackDown or from NXT to SmackDown. The Miz, Jeff Hardy, Rose and Deville. Samoa Joe, Big Cass, Oscar, The Good Brothers, The Bar. Our truth Sanity, Almas and Vega. And that's it, I think, that's it. And I'll tell you what, now that we can see the superstar shakeup for what it was, I actually think it has made both rosters quite interesting. I'm excited to see where we're gonna go from here, especially because now Samoa Joe is on SmackDown, so we can get Joe against Brian, Joe against AJ Styles, Joe against Nakamura, basically Joe against everyone, thank you very much. Now don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's SmackDown. Like, share and subscribe, head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles and follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE. My name is Simon from What Culture. I'll see you again soon. So that was our video. Thank you for watching. Please do feel free to click on anything happening around my head or something terrible might happen to this dog. Is that you too sweeting me, bro? Ugh. Disgusting. <laughs> That's really bad.